believe it was Joey Testa uh, okay. had came out, um, and uh, he had asked me my name, and uh, I just said Billy. Um, now, back in those days, you know, you didn't think twice of just saying who you were. You know, you yeah. weren't afraid of saying your name. Yeah. Um, so uh, uh, they just looked at me, and they were looking at me as if, like, they knew me. Um, and it turned out that they had came by my house on 48th Street a few times to see my father. Yeah. And uh, so they said, isn't your dad Wild Bill? And it was the first time I think I heard Wild Bill. Um, and I was like, my dad's name is Bill. Um, they're like, is your last name Catolo? And I said, yes, it is. You know, uh, and it wasn't like, you know who my father is. It wasn't like that. Correct, correct. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, I think one of them went inside and, uh, next thing I know, Roy had came out and, um, uh, Roy had made a, a quick comment about my bike. My dad had, uh, uh, gave me a brand new uh, CW, which was a racing bike at the time. Yeah. And uh, it was a Pistol Pete. And he fell in love with the name of the bike. Nice. And so he bought it for me. So Roy was just uh, looking at the bike. And he's like, oh, that's a beautiful bike. He says, uh, um, when you go home, uh, please tell your dad that Roy sends his love. So we had our glass of water. We got back on our bikes. I go home. I didn't even say anything, I don't think, in the afternoon. I think it was dinner time. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we were just talking over dinner. And I said, oh, Dad, by the way, I said, you know, I was riding my bike today. And uh, I stopped by this, uh, this uh, lounge. Um, mm -hmm. I, that was the name on the sign. Um, lounge. And, uh, you know, for a glass of water. And he's like, stop in the lounge for water? What, what are you talking about? I'm like, yeah, there's a place called the Gem Gemini or Gemini. He's like, and all of a sudden he like he paused. Yeah. And he looks at me. He's like, you walk in that bar? <laughs> I, I'm like, yeah, I, it's for a glass of water. He's he's like, Willie, you, you can't go in there. You can't go in a bar. You're a kid, you know. And um, I said, no, it was just for a glass of water. I said, but anyway. I said, a guy by the name of Roy just told me to tell you that he sends his love. And then the, there was like a second pause, you know? And he's like, Willie, do me a favor. Don't go in there ever again. And I remember a few years went by and uh, I had asked and we were just driving one day. I said, hey, why did you tell me that you didn't want me to walk in the bar? Yeah. You, know? Uh, you know, because I'm thinking that he's thinking that maybe something bad was going to happen to me. And uh, his words were to me verbatim were, um, Willie, you have no idea how many coats of paint are on those walls. Mm. And that was the extent of the conversation. I mean, I knew, I knew what the fuck he meant at that point. So, uh, well, yeah, so, it's funny this story. Well, so, so again, Bill, what, what we said earlier, the 80s were kind of like maybe the end of the, the golden era. Um, your father gets his button in 82. You now go into the 90s. He starts bringing you around, right? So how for you, because you were, you know, you were a son. You were a good son, right? And then now you become kind of like his son who's kind of like the associate now, right? So when you got born yeah. out of the 90s, how did you get introduced? And what was causing us for like in the early 90s prior to the war? When I was officially introduced to the guys um, up on 11th Avenue, I already knew most of them Yeah. Um, yeah. from coming by the house and stuff like that. And then my dad, every once in a while, would take me up to the club on a Saturday, which nice. was a, a down day. Um, and that's how I used to get to know the guys. And yeah. they would spoil me. You know, everybody gave me money. Uh, if there were video games in a place, you know, they always made sure that it, they had the thing open, so they, they would just click the thing for me. Yeah, no um, <laughs> but, you know, the difference between the 80s and the 90s for me was is that in the 80s, I didn't pay too much attention to um, who was getting murdered. Okay. You know, it, it wasn't something, you know, in the 80s at, at that age, I wasn't thinking about. Um, but in the 90s, um, 
when the you know I didn't have um, much time because I graduated in nine in June of ninety. So a few weeks later, I was already introduced up at the club. So and then the war broke out. I believe it was June of ninety one, and um, you know when he sat me down and he was at the house with Joe Scopo. Uh, I believe that Sally Machota was there. Um, it was late one night. I was coming back from the hotel Gregory, which I had just started working at. Um, and, uh, I walked in, um, and I was told to sit down and, uh, he just said to me, um, his words were, they tried to hit Vic tonight. And I remember looking, first of all, I, I was blown away that I was asked to sit down. I thought I was in trouble, you know? Um, so I'm like, what do you mean they tried to hit Vic? He says someone was sitting by his house and, uh, you know, they, they tried to kill him. And I, stupidly, uh, the question that I asked next was, was who? And, uh, you know, he kind of paused for a second but then he told me, Carmine Sessa. And I do remember hearing bad things about Carmine Sessa from my dad, um, Carmine Sessa, Greg Scarpa, um, those guys I never liked. Um, and the only reason why I didn't like them was because my dad didn't like them. It wasn't because they did anything to me. Um, but, you know, in the 90s when the war broke out and, you know, when the first guy got clipped and then the second guy got clipped, um, it started to really hit home for me. And the thing was, is that, or the strange thing I should say, is that it didn't scare me, um, where it very well should have. Um, I know people have asked me the question, um, when the war broke out, and you know, you're, you're in your recruitment stage for the most part, um, did you think like, hey, you know, did you rethink it, or, you know, did you want to run away from the life at that point? And, you know, the honest answer I can give is like, no, no. Um, I looked at it from different facets. I looked at it from, I was worried about my dad. Um, I wanted to make sure he was okay. Um, and being so young, um, you know, I idolized my dad for as far back as I can remember. So, you know, me walking in front of him, you know, walking out of a place, or especially during the time of the war, um, I wasn't the only one, you know. My dad always had a crew of guys around him. Yeah. Um, but I never hesitated to open that door first for him or, you know, just to stand in front of him. Yeah. Um, I think about it now, you know, being that I have three children, and uh, I say to myself, wow, that wasn't too bright, you know. Um, but, well, you know. Oh, go ahead, Bill. Sorry, I wanted to jump in. No, I was just going to say that, you know, when the bodies really yeah. started to drop, um, it was an eye opener, to say the least. Um, and then certain guys that were getting killed, or, or some guys, I should say, that were getting killed, were some of them weren't made people. Um, so uh, I give an example, uh, Vinnie 